security begins with you. But at the end of the day, you are your best uh, person to secure yourself, so to speak. And how do you do that? So we're going to have that conversation. And joining me in studio, I have Mombi Karioki, who's a chief trainer at Safety International Safety Training Center. Thank you for joining us. We also joined by uh, Jonathan Oluangu, who is a health safety environment manager at Proto Energy. Thank you. All right. So Mombi, um, safety is something that sometimes remains in a textbook but we ought to be aware of that word wherever we are. And I'm sure there are certain things that we completely uh, are oblivious until it's too late. Maybe just very generally at the workplace, what are some of the things that we need to be very cautious and careful? And they may be thought to be you know, non-essentials, mm -hmm. but they could be a, uh, you know, a lifesaver later in life. Okay. So at the workplace, there are those things that the employer is required to do. So at Every workplace, the employee is supposed to ensure that their place is safe. No hazards are existing. In addition to that, they should ensure that they have the right tools for the employees. And the employees also have rights, such that if they are provided with tools which they feel are unsafe, the law protects them such that they can say, um, I, ca I'm, I cannot work with these tools because it will either endanger myself or endanger others. Okay, and you've talked about tools and the safety, uh, the, the workplace being safe. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those hazards are not obvious to us. Yes. Uh, and they may not also be obvious to the employer. Mm -hmm. Are there some hazards that maybe we need to be wary about that mm -hmm. may be lacking but we're not aware? Uh, yes. Uh, at the construction site, dust is one of the hazards. Then we are seeing a lot of demolition work which is going on. Then depending on uh, what material was used to construct the building, Asbestos is one of the hazards mm -hmm. that people are exposed to. When people are working on ladders, working at height, mm -hmm. they're exposed to falls. They can fall from height mm -hmm. and get injured. But uh, employees are just given a ladder and told to work, and nobody trains them. These are the hazards that you're exposed to, and this is how you should take precaution. Mm -hmm. Also, electricity is a very common hazard. Some of the chemicals that they use, when people are undertaking spray painting, the chemicals that they inhale will have long-term effects. Some of these things do not occur immediately, but in the long term, you find that uh, some of these diseases are, are unexplainable, the cancer, are related to things you are exposed to while at work. While at work. Yes. Jonathan, uh, some of these things may be very hidden. Is there a, a handbook or something somebody can look to apart from Google, um, you know, just to get some of this information? Because some of them, you find yourself working, may not realize that they're actually harmful to your health. Uh, for sure, from the definition of the word hazard, is something that is hidden. You may not see it sometimes. But uh, in a workplace setup, we believe that uh, when you bring up in a professional to do something like risk, ass risk assessment, it is from the risk assessment that will identify some of these hazards and what you're supposed to do in case you are exposed. Now, what happens is, uh, for example, a visitor comes in a workplace. Such a visitor is supposed to be informed that when you work here or when you walk here, ensure you do one, two, three, four. So some of these hazards, you may not see them, but they are there. They are hidden. So it is about doing the risk assessment that will unveil some of these hazards. It will also dictate some of the activities you do, do's and don'ts. Mm. That's why when you go to some of these uh, workplaces, you realize that uh, when you go at the gate, there's somebody there to tell you, okay, this is, a, this is a, an induction training so that you know when you go in, follow the gangways, don't touch that, don't do this. In case of emergency, this is run to do. this place. Mm. Yeah, so those are the basic preliminary that one should, that one should do. All right, Mumbi, to contextualize and put it to where we are today as a country, of course, we've just come from another very uh, sad terror attack. And there's some basic... Um, safety measures that we should take on a personal basis and this may not just be at our place of work it could be that you visited an office you could be out at a restaurant you could be visiting a friend at an office what are some of the things that we need to be cautious about or just to be um, you know have our lights on in that regard uh, wherever you go to even as we came to the studio you take note of the exit routes and um, if you're able you kindly you can go through the exit see where it terminates because unfortunately some companies just put signs but they lead nowhere so it's very important when you go to a hotel when you go to your church uh, wherever you go to 
be familiar with the exit points. It's also important to know uh, who you should talk to in the event of an emergency. Mm -hmm. When you go to a hotel, in the booklet, once you enter, there's usually a map or an emergency response place. plan of the mm -hmm. whole place. So that's one thing you should familiarize yourself once you get into a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Then also, they should, um, what I usually find at some places, they notify you who the fire marshals are because those people will help you evacuate. Um, I was fortunate to go to um, Hanover building, mm -hmm. which is right next to the city to two actually last week. So as we were going up, um, the parking is uh, up to 11 floors. Mm -hmm. The first thing that came to my mind is, how would we escape in the event anything went wrong? Right. So those are things that sh should quickly run through your mind mm -hmm. so that you can prepare for the worst. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it should... And, and, and while you're on that, um, is there normally a plan? For instance, now, if a parking is 11 floors, mm -hmm. If you wanted to drive out, that would be a very long drive yes. in a time like that. Are there, in terms of thinking safety, mm -hmm. if you were to escape, would you actually drive out or are there better ways of escaping and maybe pick your car later? Uh, the best thing is to save yourself. Forget the mm -hmm. car. Yeah, your life comes first. So I saw people using the lift, <laughs> which in my opinion um, is not safe. Mm -hmm. You're always advised, in the event of fire or any emergency, take the safest exit. Whether, but the safest one is the staircase, the staircase. Mm -hmm. and away from the source of the hazard. Mm -hmm. So um, the best thing to do is use the staircase, be calm, because in most situations people tend to panic and they forget everything that they've gone through. So try and uh, keep your calm, use the staircase. If there's anybody assisting you, follow their directions. Mm -hmm then you'll be able to get out safely. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, in terms of just being alert, because mm -hmm. uh, in, in the day and age we're living in where there are terror attacks, I've seen in airports, they're normally very cautious when it comes to bags that have just been left somewhere. Um, but when you change environment and go to a hotel, for instance, if you sat in a restaurant, for example, and the table next to you had a black bag or a rucksack and nobody manning it, most of the times we're not alert to think that that could be a threat. How do we make ourselves more alert? And secondly, what do you do with that? Okay, uh, in a hotel setup, you would realize that uh, there are contact points. Like for instance, uh, there's, a, there's a contact for, uh, for the customer care. Now, when you see something that you feel like it's a, it's a danger. It's a threat. In fact, whenever you do, whenever you, wherever you go, the first thing to think about is, am I safe? All the times, you keep on reminding yourself, am I safe? Am I safe? Am I doing the right thing? If you see anything that is uh, suspicious, you are supposed to contact for help. Let them come and check. If you see anything that you feel like this one is not the right thing, inform them. Most of the times when I go to hotels, I realize uh, some of the things that I see are unsafe. I would tell them that, uh, you see, uh, look here, there's something wrong here. Mm. Why don't you do this, do the right thing? Sometimes you go to a place and you realize there's even a, 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 a poster telling you in case of emergency, call, then there's a blank space. There's no number there. <laughs> go to an assembly point. The assembly point is not there. It's not uh, marked. So I'll always tell them, okay, whom do I call? Don't you think you should write something here? Yeah, that's probably because you're very safety-minded. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure majority of us are not safety-minded. Mm -hmm. Therefore, even if you read that, in case of emergency call, and then there's no number, mm -hmm. you probably sit down and say, oh, by the way, Mombi, guess what? There's no number there. Mm -hmm. Leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But we don't take anything, any action. Actually, we should uh, be proactive mm -hmm. and inform. That's why, as a person, I would always inform. Mm -hmm. Now, from forums like this one, is when we tell the Kenyans, please, when you see something, just raise it up. You never know. Mm. When there is this sense in a human being that tells you, do this, do that. I've even had a case where somebody tells you, I was supposed to go there, but something told me mm, not, not to, to do. Mm. Now the question is, why don't you bring out that something? Mm. Especially when you see something that's unsafe, something that's suspicious. Sometimes they're not even unsafe. Mm. You just feel like it's unsafe. Mm. Just bring it out and say, this, I think this has to be done in this way. Okay, yep. and let's now go to the home setup because another place, I mean, looking again, I'm, I'm still trying to bring this in because this is what we as Kenyans have gone through right now and it is something that needs to teach us a lesson. When we go to our uh, home area where we live, what are some of the things that we need to be wary about and cautious about because they may 
end up saving other people's lives, even if not ours. Because, uh, like, for instance, this particular so one of the killers or one of the terrorists was living in an environment. Uh, there was questionable behavior about his uh, way of life, but nobody raised it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of the things that maybe we should just need to be cautious about and what to do about them. Um, I would like to caution the landlords. As you're getting a tenant, I know you're very eager to get their money, but it's important to get some information about them. Where do they work? What do they do? Also, the neighborhood nowadays um, usually have WhatsApp groups. So it's very important any time that you find somebody whose behavior does not add up, raise it in the WhatsApp group, raise it in the, to the caretaker, and they'll always, the issue will be addressed. And it's very important as a neighborhood to have the numbers of first responders, such that should anything happen, you have them um, displayed somewhere conspicuously, you may not be there, maybe it's a domestic manager who will be available, so they can be quick to respond in the event of anything. Mm -hmm. And all, mm -hmm. Go on. Also, the children are people who are often overlooked, but they're the ones who spend a lot of time at home. So they observe a number of things. You'd be surprised that uh, if you ask the children, whose sky is that, uh, who's, and they have all the, uh, the information. So they should be involved in part of this um, a new Mbakumi initiative. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Jonathan, anything you want to add, add, especially on our environment while at home? Yeah, for sure. At home, one thing you should know is who is your neighbor. That one is the least thing you can do to yourself and even to your, uh, to your, day, to your setup. Who, know who is your neighbor. Sometimes you can even visit. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't pay just to know them. Know who is your neighbor, what is your neighbor doing? Mm. Is your neighbor the right person? Is he not? Sometimes we hear even in the news telling, uh, uh, we are being told that uh, whenever you see somebody that you feel is not the right person or is not, like some of these uh, non-Kenyans, mm. Sometimes it's good to know them. Just know who are they. Not only non Kenyans, we also have Kenyans who may not be the right persons to be our neighbors. Right. But once you know them, you will get to understand what do they do, how do they do it, when do they leave their houses. Just know this basic preliminary uh, information regarding your neighbor. Mm -hmm. As Mumbia said, the issue of children, children will tell you a lot because they are the ones at home. Even your house help. Your house help is one person who is very important. They need to give attention. With the information, yeah. although you not give, all is accurate. You give <laughs> attention. Yeah, you, you, you get all the information from them. You never know. You mm. can select and know. This one is the right information. This mm. one may not be accurate. Mm. But again, you have to engage them so that you know how was your day, how has the day been, what did you do, you know? When you, and, when and they maybe give you the training narrative. would come in because what kind of information should they also mm -hmm. be uh, aware of? Because mm -hmm. uh, I guess then it would be helpful to train them or make them aware yeah. that when things are happening, just be cautious, uh, you know, be, be mindful, be mm -hmm. alert on certain things. Yeah, yeah even uh, whenever there's some, you know, like for example, uh, you, you come to your house, your house, house uh, may tell you that maybe in the course of the day, uh, one, of, one or two things happened. Those are the, the basis of building more information into it. You tell them whenever you see something like that, just bring it on. Mm. Then the way you handle information that you get from them is what will encourage them to either give you more information mm. or not. And also historical issues regarding a house, your neighbors, you should also get to know it. I know most people when they want to get to a house, the first question is, do we have water? Mm -hmm. Is there security? Mm -hmm. You know, those are the preliminary questions somebody may ask. But again, after that, they tell you this place is secured. Anybody will tell you that. But now, when you start staying there, you forget you were supposed to Keep an know, eye. If, yeah, know if there's insecurity within the neighborhood. Mm. Also, not only your immediate neighbors. You can also know a certain area, radius, you know, what are they doing? Because some of these issues may not be within our immediate neighbors. They come from the neighbor, uh, I mean, uh, from afar. So you get to know all the things that happen. Mm. When you leave your house, you don't just go to your workplace. You also walk as you check. Mm. What, who are, what, what, where am I? Be observant. Yeah, yeah. You all keep right. on, on, the, on the lookout. You mm. never know. Mombi, how do we go about and maybe highlight the importance of training our house helps mm -hmm. and even our children? Because mm -hmm. we might ignore them, but like you say, they are good uh, resource for information. Yes. It's very important to train the children because as we train the children, as we... As they grow, we have a community of informed people. Um, matters regarding safety, um, it's very important. Like some of the institutions that we go to, they train their children from a very young age. Mm. So they learn things to do with what to do in the event of a fire, what to do in the event of a 
lone gunman, what we do in the event of a terrorism drill. So they are very informed. Mm -hmm. And they, they will always share the information. Children are not mean with information. Also the house girls, they can create hazards in the workplace by whatever they're doing. So like, you, the first thing you should do, you should treat it like their workplace. So once you get them, take them through induction training on how to handle the different installations that are there. The gas is one of the biggest hazards. Oh, yes. Electricity and uh, even the knives that they use can mm. become a hazard either to themselves or, or the people others. around them. Mm. So it's very important to not ignore the domestic workers and the children. First aid. In other countries, um, people train young children on first aid. It's also very important to train your domestic workers because they're the ones who are always at home with the young children. We want to avoid incidences where they were feeding the child, the child choked, and they decided to run away. <laughs> Once they're prepared, they'll know what to do. Mm. And uh, as I said, have the numbers of the responders. Mm. Yes. So All right. And uh, let's talk strategy. And in the event of a hazardous situation, one of the things that can be detrimental is panic. Because you need a sober mind, you need to think fast. But if you're not trained, if you've not been prepared before, then you may end up making all the wrong decisions. The importance of maybe that pre-training and also just, um, you know, strategy in terms of now in case of a hazard. Yeah, for sure. Hazards are everywhere. When they, when they transform into a risk or whenever they happen, it is your inherent training within yourself that will direct your instinct on what to do. So that's why we ins always insist on training. Training, training, training. Know what to do in case of one, know what to do in case of two. Because if you don't get that, that's when you even increase more hazards whenever there is a problem. Mm. Like for, in for instance, uh, there is a fire hazard somewhere. The question is, where do you run to? The first, for me, I would say, because I'm, I've been working in safety culture, or my self safety culture, I would run to a fire extinguisher. Now, there are so many people who don't know even where the fire extinguishers are. Now, in a domestic uh, details, one of the things that uh, maybe we should also have in our homes is a fire extinguisher. So that in case of a fire hazard, you also train the, 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 the household members mm. how to use an extinguisher. How to use it. Or a blanket. So that, yeah, so that you fight the fire. You know? But if you don't have the necessary regalia, you realize that panic comes in because you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. So one thing that you do is... Uh, Make sure you know what are the probable hazards that may come okay. and how, you, how set are you mm, for to that. fight them. Yeah. All right, Mombi, uh, adding on to that, maybe the importance of pre-training for you to be aware so that when the hazard comes, you're mentally prepared. Mm -hmm. So it is actually a legal requirement for employers to train their employees on first aid, fire and safety and health. So those the employee, employer must do. And also... It is very important because these people are able to handle anything that comes their way. You prepare them for the worst case scenarios. So it is mandatory and unfortunately some employers decide I don't want to do the training or they offer a training that does not meet the required uh, standards. Mm. So every employee should know that they should be taken through some sort of training to prepare them for fires, first aid and any other hazards. Mm. All right, and, and uh, it is a legal requirement. For institutions that possibly are not offering that, it, how, what's the recourse? How do we go about make, making sure that that is offered? Um, that is under the mandate of the Occupational Safety, Directorate of Occupational Safety and Health, mm -hmm. which is under the Ministry of Labor. Mm -hmm. So they are the enforcers of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. But what we can do as informed employees is um, uh, come together and talk to the employer and try to see how they can train them because it is a legal requirement. Mm. Yes. All right, handling of a situation which possibly either you have a robbery or an, uh, a terrorist attack. We, I mean, the papers yesterday, we had uh, the gentleman in Siat Kasam, the, the gentleman who is, he's a trained firearm holder. Mm -hmm and was seen in Westgate and uh, was seen also now at, uh, you know, 14 Riverside Drive. But that may drive some to think that, you know, you can be a hero. 
and you can you know save everybody as it were but the importance of training um jonathan and being aware should there be a ro this could be a bank robbery for example um and you know normally those people are very tense they could fire they can pull that trigger anytime but maybe just to inform us on safety in that kind of a situation mm. okay one of the requirements that i would urge even the regulator to bring in on board is to do with trainings on anti-terrorism because uh, you would realize most of the times they may attack on a public uh, setup and in a public setup there are there <coughs> excuse me there are there are there are people who are from the public and they don't know how to go about it they don't know what to do so even if anybody would say lie down everybody will lie down wake up everybody will wake up let's run everybody will run but you know this preliminary information maybe as a regulator from the directorate of safety and health services they would enforce to ensure that we have these trainings on anti-terrorism so that in case you go to a let's say an hotel they also tell you in case of this attack please do one two three four they give you all the basic uh, uh, procedures to, to undertake mm. you would realize that if you have those procedures you will not follow any direction you would remember there was a procedure, by the way. Mm. Let me follow it up. Mm. So anti-terrorism training should be enforced, should be, should be brought to, 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 to the people through various trainings. They can come through workplaces. They can come directly through the media. You know? mm. They can even share so that they tell us a uh, terrorism attack would happen in this manner. In case it's this way, what do we do? Mm. So I think th that is the basic and the most important thing for us to do first. Mm -hmm. so that we ensure that our workplaces are safe and the safety of an individual is you know even when you see a police you would realize you'll think that he's supposed to help you but at the same time he even the police are supposed to be, supposed to be saved mm -hmm. you know they have to be safe mm -hmm. they have to safeguard themselves mm -hmm. so that is it all right uh, terror attacks and uh, incidences where you have people who are holding firearms possibly just um, you're highlighting the importance of making sure that one is either trained um, and maybe just following instructions, basic instructions, because that could also mean that you could lose your life. So um, we saw a number of people who are having arms. It's, it's very important because the public could not tell the difference between are you part of the security, te security team or the terrorist. So I would urge maybe the regulators to come up with a way of them identifying themselves. Is it an armband so that the public is also aware on um, I should follow this person and not the other? Mm. Also, uh, it's very important to assess the situation. Um, just be calm, take time just to reflect on which direction you should go. So, as he said, it's very important to sensitize the public on counter-terrorism issues. Okay. Yes. Jonathan, an area that maybe we ignore a lot and could also be helpful later is while we're driving. Safety while on the road mm -hmm. and just being observant of what's happening because mm -hmm. that, again, could be a situation. I mean, terrorists have, by nature, have a way of changing how they do their thing. Uh, so yesterday I was seated in traffic and I thought to myself, what would I do? if something happened here and maybe is that an area that maybe we need to be concerned about yeah for sure we should be con concerned about uh, driving safely and safety of driving uh, one of the things i would uh, i would suggest would be you know when we do uh, we do renew our of our licenses most of our drivers you'd realize the only time they did a training the only time they went to driving school is when they wanted to get their license then from there, from there, henceforth, they've just been renewing it mm. without any other refresher course. So maybe I think after a given period of time, like say five years, somebody is supposed to go back to refresher course and training uh, of, of the driving school. And also in the driving school curriculum, they also add an element of safety in it. Mm. So that when you drive, you should always know where do I pick what? Mm. What do I should, why should I have in a car? Sometimes I see when uh, the traffic police have a crackdown, they now start checking on some few basic requirements in a vehicle. You realize most people not drive on that day because mm. they don't have them. And the question is, do you, don't, do, you, do, you, do you have them for the police 
or, or you have them for your own safety. safety. Yes, although unfortunately also the police in terms of checking, they check more to punish you or mm -hmm. get something out of you mm -hmm. rather than enforce mm -hmm. safety. Sure. Yeah. All right, Mombi, we are out of time, but your closing comments and if I was to say rule of thumb, some of the things that you must be aware of as you're leaving your house, these are some of the things that you just must be aware of and think about uh, for your own safety. Um, you should always ensure that you have the contacts for the first responders. That is the ambulance, the police, and any who you might call in the event of an emergency. It's very important to be prepared for anything. So in your car, you must have your first aid kit, you must have your extinguisher and not for the police, and always check, has it expired? Because mm -hmm. some of the ones that you buy, they expire, they're not refillable. Mm -hmm. Then you must always assess the situation around you, whether you're in traffic, um, at your workplace, always be familiar with the alternative exit routes in the event that this one is cut off, where will I go? So familiarize yourself with your surroundings, your compound, your schools, just to be on the safe side. All right, Jonathan, your closing remarks? Yeah, maybe in addition to that, uh, there are basic things that uh, maybe as a person you should know. Like for instance, in our Kenyan setup, one of the things you should know is uh, in, in case of fire, fire is one of the hazards that have encroached our country in several areas. So in case of fire, what should I do as a rule of thumb? Mm. In case of terrorism, these are the major things that have happened in the, previous, uh, in, the previous, in the past. So from the previous experience, you would know the major things that have happened in, in the country. And those are the things that will recur still. So what do you do? So as I've said, fire is one of it. We, we have terrorism as, as, as the other thing. So many accidents on the roads. Yes. You know? So those are the, the basic things you should be aware of. In case one, two, three things happen, how do, do I, I go do? about it? Mm. That is Thank you very much, Jonathan mm. Oluangu, Health and Safety and uh, Environment Manager with uh, Proto Energy. Thank you for Thank joining you us this morning. And Mombi Karioki, who's a Chief Trainer, Safety in International Safety uh, Training Center. Thank you for joining us this morning and just talking about safety. So please let us be aware. But um, away from that, just uh, to look at some few stories and. Uh, the story of Michelle, the ostrich, is one that defies wildlife. No, rescued from being swept away by flood waters by a Form 1 student, the bird was refused to go, has refused to go back to the wild and is now perfectly at home with its family in Isinia in Kajiado County. Michelle likes Ugali, has a huge appetite, and is the tallest in the Mutelelu homestead.